Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. I'm gonna to be doing a massage for the lovely Jessica and we are gonna be doing a neck um, massage with a lot of relaxation as well. I like to combine um, deep tissue with lots of relaxation. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dive in with my oil today. Um, I really like using oil and lotion um, both are kind of just have different, you know, they just feel different. Um, but today I'm using oil. So I like to, um, so I usually do this with my hands to warm up my hands cause they get cold. And I also, um, do this to ground myself, like in the present, if I'm feeling distracted from my last client or whatever, I just kind of center, get ready, so that I'm able to start fresh. And I like to breathe into my feet too, just make sure I'm nice and grounded before I start. And also I like to check in with um, my body, make sure I'm starting with a nice tall posture, long spine. And I like to go in nice and slow so um, if I'm doing neck work, I really like to do some work in the pectorals. If I'm working on a new client, like obviously um, you need to communicate beforehand if you're working on the pectorals and you wanna start up a little bit higher um, just to kind of get your client comfortable with your touch and um, as you communicate, you can get into these um, deeper pectoral muscles. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm just using a light to medium touch and I'm just warming up everything. So before um, I ever do deep tissue, I work on the, the soft tissue first, because it just feels better and gonna be more successful and really offering a true release in that muscle tissue and uh, I'm not really worried about being like super um, detailed right now I'm letting my fingers just really um, do a broader stroke over these muscles and I'm also kind of scanning with my fingertips to see, um, you know, where there's any fibrous knots that I might need to spend more time on. So this is a really nice way to work on the pectorals. Um, it's just, there's a lot of sensitivity in the fingertips and um, it's a nice angle for me because I don't feel like I'm putting my body in a weird position. And so I'm also um, just kind of scanning from right to left and I'm seeing like what side might need a little bit more work. Um, and so I'm gonna start to go a little bit deeper here and you do need to make sure that if you're a woman, doing this make sure that you're not your fingernails aren't too long um, just because you can definitely kind of do some uh, some moves that don't feel very good if your nails are too long but all right so I'm gonna go ahead and because I'm gonna be spending a little bit more time on these pectorals I'm uh, a lot more aware of what's going on with Jessica at this point so I'm feeling a lot of tension in her left side. So I'm gonna start to kind of um, focus on this left side a little bit more. And it's harder always to do deep tissue when you're working with one hand. So there's tricks that you have as a therapist um, just by stacking your hands. I'm gonna go ahead and not lose contact. And just by stacking your hands, you can start to go deeper. And um, 
you know, as a, as a professional massage therapist who does a lot of massages, um, you know, learning little tricks um, that can help you have more endurance is just so important. So um, this is just a great technique, just stacking the hands. And uh, so I'm gonna start to just kind of run my fingers down. And if, if I wanted to do really deep tissue, typically if you're working in towards the body, you're gonna go, um, you're gonna access the deeper layers of tissue easier. So right now, it's kind of a medium to deep. And Jessica and I had a little talk before I started this massage and she's more comfortable with like a medium pressure, medium to deep. So I'm not gonna go a whole lot deeper than this. And um, you're also getting into the one of the rotator cuff muscles a little bit, but that's not really like my focus right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start at the origin of this muscle a little bit and really make sure that that connection point um, stretches out a little bit and relieve some of the pressure across the whole pectoral muscle on this side. Um, and really paying attention to Jessica's body language. If her shoulders are starting to lift or I see her kind of wincing her in her face, like there's just, you know, signs that you're going a little too deep maybe. Um, so just kind of always checking in with how your client's responding. And if you feel spots that feel um, like they need a little bit more, you can always do a little bit of trigger point work. So like I said, just, um, Working your way in towards the body is a way to go deeper and do some trigger point that's really effective. Um, and this is also a really important place to not have super long nails if you're doing this kind of work. So sometimes if the pectorals are really um, contracted, they can feel kind of bouncy. And so I would never begin a session with this trigger point work because I would be kind of like um, wasting my, my energy. Like whenever I go in for deep tissue, I want to make sure that I'm on the right spot and that my client's ready for it so that it's like a worthwhile experience for me and for them. And so, yeah, just taking my time here. And I always like to end with something that, um, you know, just feels nice. I like to make nice with the muscles after I do deep tissue on an area. And so I already know that I'm not gonna be spending as much time on the right side. Um, so I always start with the side that's tightest if I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. And sometimes I'll be like surprised in what I find on the opposite side, but I think just uh, as a therapist, like if you have instincts about what's going on with someone, um, really trust those because it's really easy to overthink. And um, I just um, am able to be a lot more helpful when I don't overthink what I, the work I'm doing for my client. And uh, so yeah, doing the same type of routine on each side. Um, I would never do that work on the left without doing some something somewhat similar on the opposite side. Um, and if you notice, I actually changed the position of my hand. So before my left hand was um, below and this time my right hand. So just always kind of balancing how I'm working with my own body. Um, I find that it's stimulating for my mind as well, and it kind of keeps me alert when I uh, don't just go on automatic with how I do things. So um, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here, like I said, but I do feel a few spots where I'm gonna go a little bit deeper, and I'm gonna start to just work my way in.
and um, really just trying to keep my own posture, you know, nice and tall. I'm not hunching over too much. Um, typically, when you're doing deep tissue work, you want to like involve your whole body. So when I get the most tired is when I'm doing this kind of work sometimes because it's like smaller movements. Um, so I'm just checking in with my own body. And I'm not gonna spend a whole lot more time here. So I like to um, I'm gonna go ahead and make nice on both sides. And yeah, this is um, something a little bit mindless in that. All right, so I'm gonna start to work my way into the neck and um, it's nice to just kind of push these shoulders down a little bit before you do that neck work. And um, you know, if you're working on a new client, sometimes, um, especially if it's someone that doesn't have a lot of experience getting massages, it can be nice to work on the neck first and kind of um, like, you know, standard approach to massage is you don't want to initiate conversation with your client very much, but sometimes I break that rule and I find that um, doing, you know, engaging a little bit with a new client really helps them feel more comfortable. Um, and I find that even getting massages from new therapists, sometimes there's this like, you know, a lot of reluctance to say anything. And so it's kind of just client by client. You can read the situation, but um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start to work my way into the neck and I'm doing a lot of um, these effleurage type strokes. So I'm just bringing this oil into the neck and um, also just scanning Jessica's neck from left to right and seeing what's going on. So I'm noticing that she's kind of, um, I notice that I'm going a little too deep towards the occipital. So this is a chance for me to see like where um, she might have more tender spots or before I really go in. So I spend a lot of time um, working towards deep tissue, I never start with it. Um, and if I have a new client, I usually won't even do deep tissue the first, you know, two or three massages. Um, it just kind of depends. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, I start most of my neck work, deeper neck work, with uh, just doing little circles along this occipital ridge and just frame of ref reference, if you wanna start on like that mastoid process, it's a really great way to um, kind of find the right spot. So if you start in that mastoid process and go like just slightly lower and start to work your way in towards the center of the neck, um, you're most likely on just a spot that's really really good spot to work on, especially if people have headaches. Um, and if your client starts to hold up their head, really like remind them to be completely effortless in holding up their head. And um, I find that if I am working on someone like people that I work on like midday, um, have a harder time relaxing so really just like reading your client and and just not treating every massage the same so anyway I'm gonna start to go ahead and do little circles and just encouraging Jessica to um, let go of all holding in her head and neck as I work and I'm actually feeling a little bit of inflammation around the mastoid process here. Um, 
Not so much that I wouldn't work on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just work on this area a little bit. And um, I'm not really, you know, you, you don't have to, like when you're giving a massage, you don't have to be like, okay, I'm gonna do this two times and then three times, it's really like letting it happen organically. Um, Cause massages that, that have a more mechanical approach, I just don't think feel as good and they aren't really as effective. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my time here. And I really like to um, start in that spot and then go ahead and work my way down. And um, also I'm just kind of reading Jessica's body language and if she starts to lift her shoulders or um, just making sure that I'm using, um, you know, the right amount of pressure. And keeping in mind that Jessica wanted like a medium to deep, she doesn't want a super deep massage. And I find that that's another mistake that therapists can make sometimes is being a little overbearing and kind of deciding what their client needs. Um, so really just catering to your client, but encouraging them to step outside of their comfort zone too. Um, that's a big part of getting massages if you want um, to work on more chronic issues. So, um, all right, so I am going to start holding in a few spots that feel a little tighter and just making sure that I am breathing myself, staying connected to my own body as I work. And I'm going to start to just hold, do a little trigger plan here. And I know that um, this isn't, you know, perfect body mechanics on my part. Like you definitely don't want that bend in your fingers, but I feel okay. So I'm just kind of listening to my body. Ideally, you'd want to be, you know, with a curved finger. Um, I'm not too worried about it right now. Okay, so a little bit more trigger point in here. Holding for five to 10 seconds at a time is pretty standard. And um, I'm gonna start to work my way into the SEM muscle. Um, and so if you're having trouble finding it, you can just reference that mastoid process and kind of work your way down. And um, it's a pretty big muscle that usually feels kind of ropey. So um, to find the SEM, I find it's easier when the head is turned. Um, kind of every body is different. So I'm just gonna start my way in and you can also use a soft fist this is actually a better position for um, the joints of the finger um, it's a nice way to work AC SCM and uh, it's a little harder to do anything too detailed with this kind of work but also get into that upper trap a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and um, do a little bit of uh, more detailed work with my thumb so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I'm coming in at a nice angle and I'm just gonna make sure that Jessica's not her holding her head at all um, anytime that she would be lifting her head, this SEM muscle is gonna automatically contract a lot more than it normally would. So I'm just gonna go in with my thumb. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit more work here. 
um, in this SEM and I wouldn't say this is the most fun um, kind of work to have done, but it's really healing for anybody who has headaches or who has had severe whiplash or anything like that. Um, so I'm just kind of taking my time here. And if someone wanted um, super deep tissue, this is a great position to be in due to trigger point on the SEM. Um, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that today. I don't think. So just uh, really fleshing this muscle out and hopefully providing a little more length in there. And it's nice. Um, to go in with a broader stroke if you're doing if you're doing that more detailed work. And when I uh, change sides, I kind of take a moment to just like adjust my body and take a breath because this kind of work does require a good bit of focus. Um, you have to be pretty detail oriented when you're doing this kind of neck work. This side actually feels a little bit tighter. Um, anytime that something feels swollen or inflamed, it's a sign that um, you probably shouldn't go super deep. And it's an important thing to communicate with your client. Um, you know, ice packs are great for any sort of inflammation. So I might encourage my client to do an ice pack when they go home, if there's a spot that feels really inflamed. Um, I also recommend turmeric sometimes. It's a great supplement um, if somebody struggles with inflammation. So, I'll go ahead and um, just hold here and I'm making sure that Jessica's head is nice and supported with my right hand and I'm gonna start to just work my way in I'm not as focused on the scalenes today I am more focused on the SEM This is a really nice way to do this neck work. Um, and doing something a little more detailed. Um, so it's really hard to do this deeper work on the SEM if you're right behind the table. So I'm just making sure that I'm at a nice angle to work. And sometimes I find when I'm really like focused, I start holding my breath. And so just reminding myself to breathe as I work. And um, you do wanna be a little careful when you get um, lower, in the lower part of the neck, it gets really sensitive. So I'm just kind of being aware. And my favorite way to work on the suboccipitals is with that upward stroke um, with my fingertips. I just find it's really effective. Um, and Um, like to kind of end that neck work with how I started. And before I forget, I just want to thank a few of our patrons. I'd like to thank Rigo, Michael, and Matt. Thank you guys so much for your support. It means a lot to us. So 
So I'm going to do a little um, stretch for the neck. So I'm just kind of scooping my fingertips and shaking the head a little bit. And um, because I did, you know, some deeper work, I always like to end with something that is more relaxing. So um, if somebody has long hair, it can actually feel really nice to do just some really soft hair pulling. Um, and everybody has, you know, preferences, but there's so many nerve endings on the top of the scalp that just by um, doing this light hair pulling, it's a great way to stimulate those nerve endings and usually feels really nice. Um, some people like, you know, even, even harder if you just kind of communicate. And some people like really soft. So, um, there's a lot of tension usually in the temples, so you can actually grab hold of that hair like closer to the temple kind of encourage that release in there and I'm going to go in with some scalp massage and it's a lot easier if you're trying to do this with my hands floating is a lot harder than if my hands are resting or my wrists are resting on the table And just doing little circles. Um, I'm really like gliding my fingers across the different hair fibers. Um, so this is stimulating the scalp. It's not really massaging the muscles in the scalp as much. Um, if you wanted to do that, you would more like hold one place and actually massage these little muscles in here. There are a lot of little muscles in the forehead and in the temple. So as I kind of get closer, I'm gonna start to um, really stimulate these, these little muscles more. And it usually feels really nice if you can drag your fingers across that hairline. Um, I spend a lot of time on these temples. And you know, if it is like the middle of the day and you're working on a woman who has makeup on, like always check in before you do this kind of work. Um, Cause I know that as women, we work really hard to look pretty and just want to check in. There's all kinds of fun ways that you can do, you know, facial massage that feel really nice. Um, I like to mix up my routine and not do the same thing all the time. So, um, it's just really interesting because, you know, everybody's different. So, if I'm working on someone who's feeling really anxious, I would make a point to work a little more slowly and not, um, yeah, it's just every massage is different. And I like to really take my time with these temples. Um, just a lot of tension that people can hold here. Again, I'm just, I'm not really counting like how many times I do little circles. I'm really just paying attention to how everything's responding. And I like to remind my clients when I'm doing this work to um, let their tongue rest in the lower part of their um, mouth kind of feel that space in their mouth it, it relaxes the jaw a lot and if I'm feeling a lot of tension here it's usually a sign that um, 
there's tension in the jaw, like either some clenching of the, you know, grinding of the teeth or something like that. So, and I always like to do something that just feels nice. This is one of my favorite moves when an ending uh, just feels really nurturing. And I don't have one client who, client who doesn't like it. And you never wanna rush when you're ending. So I like to just end nice and slow and that is it for today. Thank you for joining us today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Welcome to Yoga Plus. Courses available from pupil to yogi. Sort by yoga, fitness, and instructors. Create your own routines. Access the Pose Library. Yoga Plus by Psyche Truth. Available on Google Play and the App Store. Join us for 14 and 30 day programs, hour long classes, and much more on our yoga app, Yoga Plus by Psyche Truth. It's free to download and features a variety of wellness content, including yoga, fitness, Pilates, guided meditations, and interviews with dozens of wellness experts. 